Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below, duplicating some tabs to put the reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab to duplicate it and then we're going to right click the tab to duplicate it. Let's go back to that middle tab down to the reports on the left hand side and we want to open up the balance sheet to start off with as it's thinking we'll tab to the right reports on the left hand side this time let's open up the p and the l the profit and the loss let's close the hamburger and change the range from 110125 to let's say 11325 and run it and then tab into the middle closing the hamburger I'm going to go from 110125 to 11325 and run that one as well. Now, in prior presentations, we've been thinking about our e commerce situation where we're selling inventory, but not on ground in a store, rather online using some kind of application such as a Shopify, uh, for example. And last time we thought about the easiest method to basically track the Shopify income as it pulls in to our system that being just waiting till the thing hits the bank account and uh, using the bank feeds to enter it into the system and we saw that although that is quite easy it does have some limitations in that we don't get as much detail in terms of the actual items uh that are that are broken out we have a net amount that's actually coming into our bank account so we might want more detail for tax preparation to deal with sales tax issues and also to uh, just have more information for our decision making purposes. So I'm going to do this in Excel first because Excel is kind of the most transparent way to see this and then we'll do a similar process in QuickBooks. Now note when we look at this process you can think of it we're going to think of it as a manual process first but this is what a lot of the applications are doing as well. So when we get into the apps including the integration the quickbooks app integration what is it doing it's not pulling most of these apps and the ones most people recommend is not pulling every transaction in as though it was a sales receipt mirroring a perpetual inventory system like we would have in an on-ground shop instead it's summarizing the data in some way so whether you're going to use an app or not it's useful to first think what what would be the manual method do to do if i was just going to try to pull the information in so we can understand what the apps are doing so you could use this manual method so you don't have the integrations and the other apps and or you can you can use this as a stepping stone to understand what the apps are doing so that when you pull in the information uh with the app you have some ideas of of why it's and how it's doing what it's doing okay so so if we go to our shopify the the general idea is if we have an online platform we're concentrated on shopify now we might do an amazon uh comparison uh in a future presentation but the idea would be that you get the information from the shopify and we're not trying to pull in every single transactions so for example if i go to my analysis in the shopify and i go into the reports and I'm going to take a look at the total sales report here. These are all the transactions that have happened. Obviously, this is not much happening in this particular Shopify, but that's all the stuff that's happening. I don't want to pull in each of these individual items as a separate sale in QuickBooks for many of the reasons we talked about before. It overwhelms the system and all that. And I already have the information here. What I want to do instead uh, is to group this information together in some way, shape or form so that I can have a lump sum pull into my system. Now, what is pulling into our system as we saw last time are the bank feeds. So, so that means that there's already a grouping going on by, in essence, Shopify that's going to tie out to the payouts that they're going to be giving us. So that means that we want to tie out. We can try to summarize all the data that happens per payout that we're going to get that we already said and saw that hits our bank account, right? So. If we look at the payouts, then if I go to like my finances up top and we go to the payouts, I can go in here and say, all right, there's my payout. So I want to basically look at all the data that ties to the payouts. Now I believe Shopify pays out like every day 
whereas something like an Amazon pays out every every uh, two weeks or something like that. But the general idea is we'd like to enter this so it ties into the payout. So if I go into here, for example, I can see uh, my, my data, the gross and the fees uh, related to the payout that's happening here. And then I can see the transactions that took place and the transactions numbers and the date that it took place here. So when I go on over to my bank feeds for this particular example, I, I integrated this example. So this isn't a manual one, but if, but this one I used the commerce, which we'll talk about later in order to connect the Shopify. And if I look at the commerce tab, that same data kind of pulls in to the, to the orders and then the payout. So here's the actual payout. It also pulls in to the payout tab up here, which we'll talk about in future presentations. And then in the banking side of things, I, I should see a deposit that's going to come through on the bank for this uh, 715, right, that we're going to tie into. Okay, so that's the general idea. So then I want to run a report on this side that's going to tie into the total, this 870 before the fees because the fees are being charged here on the Shopify payout thing. And in the analysis side, if I go to the reports and if you have a higher level of, of uh, plan, you might have better reports. But if I go into the total sales tab and I run this thing for just that day and I look at the invoices to make sure I have the same batching of invoices, I have one more invoice, I believe this last one was not in there so this totals up to to the 480 on the gross and then we had uh we had shipping which brought it up we charged for shipping to 98 970 minus that one dollar to bring it because this one wasn't included before and that gets us to that 870 number so so this we have a little bit different example in excel from these numbers to make it a little bit more complex but we're mirroring that kind of concept over here, right? So we have the sales side of things. We have the sales and we had discounts in this example, no returns. Here's the sales and there's the shipping. And we imagine that we had sales tax collected in this particular example to get us to the sales, the amount that we, we uh, pulled in 1669.91. We then imagined that we didn't just have the Shopify pay, which is which is what we're using in our example, but also connected, I'm sorry that we didn't just have, yeah, just the Shopify, but we also connected the PayPal, right? So then we had the PayPal in there and some of the payments were paid out with PayPal. PayPal charges their own fees and then the rest was paid out from Shopify. So that's the general concept. And then in this screen, this screen is basically mirroring the payout screen that we looked at we see that the we're charging that added 1548 in this case for the payouts that were for the Shopify sales. Now, last time we did our little Excel worksheet, imagining we just wait till the payouts hit the bank account. In this case, we would have two payouts, one from PayPal, one from Shopify. And we just said that the checking account's gonna go up, that the PayPal account's gonna go up, and then sales is going to go up for the other side of the transaction and then we made an adjustment to kind of tie into the 1099 imagining we got a 1099 at the end of the year however that's some estimates that are happening there and we're, we're losing some more detail of the data if we want to add more detail of the data we could take this information we're imagining basically came from the reports we looked at from shopify 